We're still looking at the topic of trading income. We've said that a person who is self-employed, like a sole trader, for example, owns a business and makes trading profits. And on those trading profits, the sole trader has to pay income tax. Now, a sole trader chooses an accounting date and every year he has to prepare accounts to that accounting date. And on his trading profits, he has to pay income tax. So a sole trader has a trading cycle. The trading cycle begins when the sole trader starts trading. And the trading cycle ends when the sole trader stops trading. And this could be many years later. And over that trading cycle, the sole trader will make trading profits on which he has to pay income tax. What we're trying to determine in this session and over the next few sessions is how much of the sole trader's trading profits will be taxed in each fiscal year. Now, the key issue here that you have to appreciate, remember that the sole trader pays income tax for each fiscal year. And the fiscal year runs from the 6th of April in one year to the 5th of April the following year. Now, it would be convenient if the sole trader chose an accounting date of the 5th of April. So his period of account would correspond to the fiscal year. But, as we've said, sole trader is free to choose any accounting date he wants. He can choose an accounting date of the 30th of June, he can choose an accounting date of the 30th of September or the 31st of December. And he will prepare accounts to any of those accounting dates that he chooses. So what we have to do is we have to establish some link between the period of accounts, which will give us his trading profits, to work out how much of those trading profits are going to be taxed in each fiscal year. And that is what we're going to start looking at. So, just to recap, what we're doing in this session and over the next few sessions, a sole trader has to pay income tax for each fiscal year. And the fiscal year runs from the 6th of April to the 5th of April. But the sole trader prepares accounts to an accounting date, like the 31st of December, for example, which doesn't correspond to the fiscal year. And so we've got to establish some sort of link between the period of accounts to establish when those profits will be taxed, which fiscal year those profits will be taxed. And that is what we're going to look at. In order to determine how much of the sole trader's profits will be taxed in each fiscal year, we've got to look at his trading cycle because it depends where the sole trader is in his trading cycle. So, when, is that, when the sole trader is at the beginning of his trading cycle, then we have some special rules called opening year rules to determine how much of the profits will be taxed in the first and second fiscal years. So, let's say this is the sole trader's trading cycle. When he starts to trade, then he's continuing to trade and when he's continuing to trade he's in the middle of his trading cycle and then he ceases to trade and that is the end of his trading cycle. Now in order to work out how much of his profits will be taxed in each fiscal year when he's at the beginning of his trading cycle we're going to use something called opening year rules. So opening year rules will tell us how much of the sole trader's profits will be taxed in each fiscal year. So opening year rules used to determine the T income, how much will be taxed in the first and second fiscal years. When the sole trader is in the middle of his trading cycle, we use something called the 
normal basis or the current year basis to determine T to determine how much of the profits will be taxed in the fiscal year and when the sole trader is ceasing to trade when he's, when he's at the end of his trading cycle we use something called the closing year rules to determine how much of his profits will be taxed in his last fiscal year. Now, we're going to look at these opening your rules, closing your rules and so on in the next few sessions. One thing I want to mention in this session is this period before the sole trader starts to trade and that's called the pre-trading period. So that is the period so that is the period before the sole trader starts trading. Now, all you need to know about the pre-trading period. Now, all you need to know about the pre-trading period is that any expenditure incurred in this pre-trading period before the sole trader starts trading is an allowable expense provided it's provided it is revenue expenditure so any expenditure provided it's revenue expenditure you can treat it as if it occurred on the first day of trading and so it will reduce your tax adjusted profits and reduce the amount of tax that the sole trader pays so pre-trading expenditure provided it's revenue expenditure and it's incurred within seven years before the business starts trading. In that case, it's an allowable expense. So what are the examples of this pre-trading expenditure? Things like advertising ex expenditure. So before the sole trader starts his business, perhaps selling mobile phones, he spends some money advertising. So advertising is expenditure. Things like rent paid for his premises, rent paid in advance. Is also allowable expense. Perhaps some staff costs or some telephone costs. Things like printing and stationery costs. These are all allowable expenses and they're treated as if they occurred on the first day of trading. 